Hi guys, welcome back. We're so excited that you're here. Today's episode is all about why some mediums increase their confidence rapidly and others don't. So this is a big topic we need to talk about because I feel like it's something that comes up a lot. And just for the record, uh, for people listening, of course, you're going to have moments where you don't feel confident in your mediumship. That's that's number one to start out with, because I don't want to hear anyone say, not anyone can be confident all the time. Yeah, you so know? you just start out by saying, unshakable confidence, yeah. it doesn't exist. I hear people say that, I'm just trying to get unshakable confidence or unshakable belief. And it's like, sometimes we're going to feel down. There's sometimes, moments that that's right, going to come up. So it's going to come up no matter how what you do yeah. on a daily basis, no matter what your mindset but is. But we're talking about like the conversation that's really important to be had is that there's some mediums that kind of get stuck in this plateau for long periods of time. It's normal for plateaus to come up in any business, um, but do we stay there for years or do we actually continue to shift levels? Right. And it's a choice really. And we work with a lot of second mediums, yeah. right? Obviously. So it's like what I realize is the common theme between psychic mediums that continually increase their confidence and grow their business compared to the ones that don't, it's very clear what stands out to me, the difference between the two. I'm curious and I know that you've seen that too. What what are you thinking as one of the one of the ideas? Well, one of the one main of one of the main things that I noticed after working with all of these different psychic mediums at the deepest level and really getting into their unconscious and getting into the truth of who they really are. Yeah. I realize the ones that continue to thrive are the ones that are continuously reaching out for personal development. Yes. They're in groups, whether they're free groups, paid groups, they have people around them that they're continuously on a weekly basis yeah. in contact with that are like-minded, that are either other psychic mediums or they're people that are healers that they're connecting with and they are building each other's mindset together. That I've... That's exactly what I'm thinking too. And we didn't even talk about this ahead of time, but that's exactly what I've noticed. And I was thinking the other day, like, oh my gosh, I would not be where I was today with like taking the steps and, and doing the mediumship for as long as I have been, if it weren't for the classes and the mentors that I've had over the years. Like I did a lot on my own. There's a lot in the inner journey with mediumship, of course, as you know, like just with coach, coaching too. But really, if I didn't have those mentors, I probably would be moving a little bit slower. Maybe I would be like dabbling into mediumship, stepping back. I don't know. Maybe I'd still be teaching or it would have taken me longer to get out of teaching to go into mediumship. I probably would have thought, well, I can do this on the side. It could be a hobby, you know, but I think that that community is so important to to be surrounded with other people to know that you're not alone. It really is because even if you're a healer or a coach, you need support, yeah. right? It's like because psychic mediums, healers, we're all impasse and our natural instinct is just to give, 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 give. We want to just go help and heal people and help them. Yeah. And the thing is, the common theme is it's hard for us to receive that help mm -hmm. ourselves. And we really need that. I, I was on a call yesterday with one of my mentors. Yeah. And right when I joined the webinar, I got very emotional. And my soul knew that I had to be there. Because yesterday, I was giving to my clients. Yeah. I was giving, uh, I forget what else we did, but I was just giving my heart, giving my service. And it's like, after you give so much, you have to receive or else over time you become on balance. And yeah. the thing is, even on a day-to-day -day basis, but if you're not joining groups, if you're not connecting with like-minded people and getting that support that you need over a year time, over two years time, five years time, I notice the compound effect starts to take course. And then all of a sudden you wind up in this foggy cloud and you can't see clear and you're yeah. wondering why. And it's so obvious that you miss it. Exactly. And then it can make you overthink, like, am I doing the right thing? Because if you're in the cloud by yourself, like sometimes you do have to go through those moments, but if you're in the cloud by yourself for so long and you're just having these thoughts swirl, but you're not taking some sort of action to be in a group or to, to learn or whatever, self-develop, 
then you're going to be thinking, am I crazy? Like, should I be going in another direction? So I think by joining different groups, whether it's free or paid, you know, putting yourself in situations where you're either practicing or talking and reflecting about what is happening, you start to realize, oh, wow, other people have been through this. And I always compare things to um, like Les Brown or someone like Tony Robbins or there's so many different mentors out there, online mentors that connect to um, hard times and not even just mediums because mediums have been through it too, but there's other mentors that you can look to in other different ways. But they talk about the moments of their life, like there's highs and lows and it's very normal. And it's one of those moments where when the low comes up and you see it in them, you're like, oh, they went through that. You know, like they had that experience. Okay, and there's a common theme with people that are really doing it, put, putting themselves out there. I think that's important. It's so important because a lot of times we're comparing like how we feel on the inside compared to how people look on the outside. We're scrolling through exactly. our news feed. We're looking at this psychic medium and like, whoa, they're a star, this healer. It's like, whoa, it looks like everything's just great with them. And it's like, no, once you get to know these people and you connect deeply, you realize yeah. they're just human beings just right. like us. And yes, they do have low times and they're very similar to us. We're also similar. Yeah. And I think you hit it right there. That That's the big point that really helps me to keep going is when I realize, wow, other coaches feel that same way, right? Mm -hmm. Other coaches feel lonely at times. That's one that I notice. I know psychic mediums feel like that. Yeah. It's lonely out there. You know, you're a psychic medium because you're a people person and you love people. And then all of a sudden for the business owner, psychic mediums, they start a business and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, this is lonely, which is another reason why you need those support yeah. groups. And that's exactly why um, the mediumship membership community was born for me, Mediumship Mastery Circle, because I felt like, actually you and I were on a bike ride and we were talking and you're like, why don't you create a membership? And I'm like, yeah, it's something that's crossed my mind but I'm not really sure. And then something like a feeling came over me after our bike ride or during the bike ride. I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna try it out. And I realized that segue from the mentorship where they have to kind of be their own little, you know, fly out of the nest and do their own thing, but also they need some sort of maintenance, you know, after where they, they feel like they're doing some sort of work like, okay, I have some practice exercise to go through with other people. And the good thing about that is it's not just mediumship practice. Mediumship isn't about just the practice. It's about the mindset piece. And I think that's a big thing that sets people apart too when it comes to confidence in the mediumship is there are people that aren't just doing practice. They're actually reading books or they're taking time on their own to go and spend time by themselves in nature. They're not just giving information. If you're really connecting mediumistically, which everyone on here, if you're a medium, you're putting in the effort and energy just to watch a podcast on this topic, um, most likely you're doing it. You know that the spirit realm talks about, um, I'm saying you, you know that the, the spirit realm is, is real. it talks about the balance, talks about like living your life fully and all of that. So why can't we do that as, as mediums? And I think that's that's comes back to the confidence because you have a little bit of the, the mediumship where you're giving readings, you have a little bit of your human life, and you have that balance. Right. And the, you, you hit it right there, human life, right? So we all had a life before we even knew we were a medium, before yeah. we could do this, which means that we have a lot of trauma too, some of us, most of us. We have some kind of trauma, some kind of negative beliefs inside of us. And if we yeah. don't look at that side of ourselves, we don't look at that, I call it the dark side of ourselves, the side that we kind of want to push to the side and ignore. We'll do it later after we make a million dollars. We'll do it later. And it's like, you wonder why with each accomplishment that you have, you still feel that emptiness. You still feel that sadness or whatever that energy is inside. Yeah, that you like a missing there. piece that could It's a missing up. piece. And you think, oh, I know what it is. It's because I need to make $2 million a year or I need to serve more and more people. And it's like, no, it's going back to what you're saying. It's doing that personal development. It's 80% mindset, 20% skill, right? So if you want to increase your confidence, it's like yeah. you have to really go to that mindset. And then of course, practice too, right? Practice your mediumship. But if yeah. you don't have that mindset, it reminds me of sports. There's so much talent out there in sports, but what separates the greats from the people that are not, that don't mm -hmm. end up becoming great, 
it's the mindset piece. Everybody knows that because there's people like Tom yeah. Brady who is so talented, so, so talented. There were other quarterbacks that were way more talented than him. Yeah. But somehow, some way along the way, he figured out the missing piece, the well, mindset part of it. And he had people that didn't believe in him. So it kind of gave him that edge to make sure that he was putting in even more effort. Exactly. So not saying that you have to go and, and have someone say, I don't believe in you as like a medium or, or a coach, whoever's listening to this, but it's thinking like, what can I do to internally like really tune in to what's happening? And I think the self-development field, like all this, these topics are like, you need to get better, you need to fix yourself. I'm not saying fix yourself, but I'm saying like to really tune in to like, am I truly happy? And that's the question that, you know, is something to present to people if you're listening. Um, are you truly happy? Are you satisfied? I remember at the very beginning of my mediumship journey, I was doing these group intentional calls with other mediums. and. Each week we would report back like how many readings did you have this week and like what is your intention or I, I don't remember the exact questions but it was like five questions and I got to a place where I, I'm like oh I need to do more and one of the one of my friends um, said well I feel like you're doing it like you're doing everything that you're sharing but I wasn't recognizing it didn't feel like it was good enough like I wasn't doing enough and I think with the the psychic mediumship. Um, field in the spiritual entrepreneur field, a lot of times people think, am I doing enough? And and that's the question. Sometimes it is enough what you're doing, you know, the energy of what you're doing, but it's reflecting on what's right in front of you and being grateful. And I feel like that comes back to the confidence piece too, because you're being in the present moment of, of literally observing how far you've come and how much work you've put in. If you keep on beating yourself over over the head and saying, I'm not doing enough, or I'm not doing great readings, or I, I suck, or look at that person over there, you're not staying focused on what's in front of you. And that can truly affect your confidence with doing that over and over, I feel. Yeah, that's very true. So it's just something to think about, you know, going through any area of your life. Like if you want to feel more confident, well, you need to put in, you do need to put in some energy, but you also need to reflect on where you were before, not comparing yourself to someone else because someone else is on their own journey. Right. And that's the thing. And not, not trying to fill that missing piece like we're talking about with more action. Exactly. Or more readings or more validation. I was talking with somebody the other day and it was like, yeah, that's an addiction, right? Work addiction's addiction, and it's not a good addiction. No addiction's good, right? Work addiction, and then also addicted to connecting with spirit, right? To where you think like, oh, I'm just gonna keep, I'm, I'm gonna keep chasing that high, chasing that high, chasing mm -hmm. high, because like we like the feeling of it, but also unconsciously we're trying to fill that missing piece, which is the dark side of ourselves, right? The side that we need to reflect on, which yeah. is what you're talking about, like reflecting on what's in front of you, re genuinely reflecting, not. Not shaming yourself. It, anybody who feels like personal development is shaming them, yeah. I feel like they have a lot more insecurities to work on because yeah. it's not that at all. If you listen, no. I mean, maybe some people out there might be saying that, but if you listen to most people in the personal development field, they're telling you to like appreciate what you are right now and right. then just keep getting better and, and enjoy your life and, and get happier with it, right? By, yeah. by looking at the true self of you and looking at, what do I like about myself? Like what, what is hurting me and what feels good about myself? You know, like what, what could I work on to increase my happiness? What can I work on to increase my Yeah, peace? why not want to figure that out? And it, it, you brought up earlier about like the trauma that's within possibly like mediums, coaches, like anyone that's doing the work that's trying to help other people. I have found a common theme working with other psychic mediums, you know, whether it's students or connecting with um, people in the field, I've noticed that we've all had something pivotal transform in us. There's been moments that have come up or past situations from childhood um, where there's something that's made us rise up to do the work that we're doing. But I also feel like we're also getting healed each time we give readings. So it's almost like we're getting healed in the process too from the past. So it's something that comes up and that goes back to the importance of reflection and seeing that there's a reason that you are exactly where you are in your mediumship 
and trusting it. Right. So let's just put words on it. If you don't want to increase your confidence as a medium, then don't go to support groups. Don't do personal development. Continue just to do readings over and over and over Com again. Continue after your reading to go in circles and think about, oh, was that good? Was that not? And, and I call it on healthy reflection. Yeah. Continue to just, you know, spin, 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 spin. What else would they be doing? They would just be staying in their house and, in their house. <laughs> and not really pushing outside of your comfort zone. I think that's the big thing. Right. Trying to people please everybody and make everybody believe in mediumship. I feel like that's another thing that will really lower your yeah. confidence because look, most people aren't going to believe in mediumship. Yeah, it's okay. They don't need to. to. They don't need to because it's a word. Like it's an experience. So if you really want the best for people and you want them to experience it, shut up about it like don't yeah. don't try to convince people about it just give them an experience naturally when yeah. it when it's the time and if yeah, it's, sometimes it's, it'll never be the time for some people and understand that too and i think accept that yeah and that goes back to really paying attention to your own journey you know like not trying to push things on other people we're sitting there having this conversation on the podcast because people are choosing to watch it you know um but it's important like I think at the very beginning stages of mediumship, it's very easy to get stuck in the trap on trying to make people believe in what you do. And that was my thing. Like, you know, you feel like you're going crazy a little bit. So you want that extra validation or that confirmation from people to see like, I, I'm really receiving this. And you want them to kind of, you know, feel that same energy too, or give you that validation like you mentioned, but it's, it's not always going to happen and actually it's better if it doesn't happen because sometimes it's one of those moments where you do have to go inward and experience it for yourself and it, for me it took a very long time to kind of get past that point of caring what people thought about mediumship right. now i'm just like you know whoever believes in it is fine like i used to be a skeptic too um but I think it's something to think about, you know, really come back inward and, you know, you have to put in the time, energy and effort and also the investment in the people that you're around. You're going to be around people that if they're doing this work, you're going to notice a difference. You're going to notice an automatic transformation just by being the energy of someone that's doing it. Right. And it's not about like learning a new technique or strategy, which those will help. Yeah, it's it will the energy that you're in it. And then all of a sudden you receive these new insights and you feel differently and you see the world differently. And another thing is too going back to practicing reading, practicing your readings, right? If you want to feel very confident right now, then you look back in the last two years and you've only done 20 readings. Like that's yeah. another thing too, right? Like you, you have to keep doing more readings, exactly. enough readings, right? What are, I think that's different with everybody, which we'd have to sit down with somebody to specifically see what works right. for them in the moment because you are taking in all this energy, all this electricity. You got to build up your endurance. But the thing is, you have to build that up. You hit it right when, with what you were saying with it took you time, right? Eventually, you got to the point to where the confidence was there, like enough confidence was there to yeah. where you didn't have to go convince other people. The other thing too with the confidence is if you're learning from different people, whether it's a mediumship friend or it's a teacher, do not compare between teachers and compare between mediumship friends saying, well, they told me this and they told me this, so now I don't know what to believe. No, take pieces of what you feel guided to do in that moment and then you go and if you learn again, then you know that every teacher is different. So you're going to have different experiences. You don't need to compare and say, well, this information is better than that, you know, because really every teacher is offering something so you can pick pieces of what resonates with you. I always say to my students, if what I share doesn't resonate, just keep it to the side. You know, most of it does resonate with them. But at the beginning of the course, beginning of mentorship, I always say that. Because I don't want them to think that um, what they've learned before is not accurate if they come and learn something different. Right. And for the people that are saying, I don't know what to believe because this person says this, this person says that. Well, think about it. We're all humans that created this. There's no absolute truth, right? It's yeah. like, these are our experiences. This is what works for us. Here you go. Take what works for you and then move on, right? So it's not like there's no person here that's like all knowing and some people talk that way and I understand why some students feel that way because some psychic medium teachers will will use the language like this is the absolute mm -hmm. truth 
which that's their belief. Okay, that's fine. But in my opinion, there's no absolute truth, right? Right. We're all humans. We're all given our energy. And it's like what you said. It's like take the pieces that work for you. And then eventually, after you start to do this over and over and over again consistently, you start to get creative. And then you start to intuitively go with your flow, right? You intuitively start to give psychic readings in your own way because you start to craft out that from all of these experiences. So let's leave them with a question. So we want to ask, what are you currently doing and what are your action steps to bring in more confidence when it comes to your mediumship? Right. And think specifically about that. Think, like I said earlier, think over the last two years, how much work have you put into personal development, into giving readings, into increasing your skills? And then think about Do you deserve to have the confidence in this moment from the amount of work that you put in? Because that's what confidence comes from. You don't have confidence from the beginning. I think that's where people, they kind of get confused. They think that you're supposed to start with confidence. No, confidence is an effect of you putting in the work. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. If you liked it, leave a five-star review on iTunes. And remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel too. If you can think of anyone else that would love this episode, share it with them right now on social media or email. And remember, getting results is a process of learning, applying, and reflecting. Stay consistent and continue to grow every day.